Hey guys, Henning and Morton from Flip Normals here. And in today's video, we are going to be talking about crypto mats inside of Blender. So, crypto mats, you might be wondering what is crypto mats? Well, crypto mats is like normal mats for compositing, but on steroids, they can basically do anything. They can store so many different kinds of values compared to normal mats. Normal mats just store color values. And the reason this came about, like me wanting to use crypto mats was because I was doing this painting and I didn't want to do it from scratch. It was basically an exercise to see if you could set up something in 3D inside of Blender and then do like an overpaint in Photoshop. So, and some of the elements in this scene, you know, they were overlapping, maybe the lamp posts or maybe like this Tory gate back here and you want some separation between objects. And crypto mats allows you to selectively pick out objects that you can then use for a mask or a mat in Photoshop or in Nuke or inside of Blender when you're compositing to maybe hide it or color correct it, change the light of it. So that's where crypto mats are super powerful. They support, I mean, I think we, re we looked at it, it supports everything like namespaces, uh, motion blur, depth of field, transparency, They've names of objects as well. They can they can contain a lot of different kinds of information that normal mats just can't. It's also industry used as well, like throughout the entire field. So if you're if you're rendering from V-Ray to Nuke or Blender to whatever, it, it supports it supports all all major major fields. So it's really awesome to see an industry standard like CryptoMats being implemented like this in Blender. So this is our default setup. So we'll just show you what it what it can do. Not that I'm using it in this regard for the painting, but here we've just got something set up with a hue and saturation and a gamma node. And this just allows us to on the fly just change values. Um, if we wanted to, let's say now we're changing the gamma value of these amazing trees up here. Um, if we wanted to add to this, we can go in and let's see, select something here. With our little pick then say let's add this wall item here to our mat and now that's also going to get picked up once we start editing the hue and saturation for example so it's a really powerful system so i guess we'll just show you how to actually do this if you've ever done anything with masks ever before in any way when it comes to between photoshop or blender whatever it might be you will really really be thankful for crypto mats. This is going to make your life a thousand times easier. Yeah, it's so much better than having to render out separate mats for separate objects and separate materials. It just makes your life a lot easier. So the first thing you want to do, just go over to your render passes here and under crypto mat, just enable whatever output you need. So there are three kinds of outputs. Objects, which just puts all objects in your scene. Uh, they, they get different mats. So you want that. Material, based on materials and assets is based on parenting. So in here, I just have a cube and a sphere where uh, the sphere is just parented to the cube, basically. Uh, and, and that just allows us to sp specifically pick this, like if you're doing something for, I don't know, if you have a rigged character and you have clothing, maybe they use, they're not, they're separate objects, they're also using separate materials, but maybe they're parented by something. So that way you could target that specifically with the asset crypto mat. And then over on our compositing view, you can see that it just enables these crypto mats for us. But you can't use these out of the box. So once you enable them, hit render. We've already rendered, so you don't need to watch that. And then we just search for crypto. Crypto mat, have that here. So a crypto mat takes four inputs. It takes the original image input. Just hit F to get that up. After that, we just connect our crypto inputs. So these just go in order. So we have crypto 0, 2, and 4 go to 0, 1, and 2, basically. And be, be careful that you're connecting the crypto objects. Because uh, if you're just looking at it briefly, there were just like nine crypto objects here. But you just got to make or nine crypto slots. You just make sure you pick objects, materials, and assets. Yeah, so this is for this is crypto mat. We're only using this for objects. So you can then shift, control, left mouse button, click on this pass now and toggle through it. And we go down to pick. This automatically connects it to the viewer. And then a really cool thing here is like right now, nothing is in our mat because it's just pure black. That's why our image is transparent. So if we then with the eyedropper here, start picking stuff, let's say we want to darken down the foreground. We just pick a couple objects, their um, value just get added to our selection here. There we go. Control left mouse button. And now you can see these are now in our image and it's in our mat as well. So that's what we're looking through in the viewer. Now, 
we can start, you know, now we can start playing around with this. As soon as you render, you have all this information available to you. So let's add a mix node. So we have something to input it to. And here, we just want to take our mat value into the fact. Then we want our image, which is here. This is our original render layer into the top slot. And then we'll add a gamma node as well. So this gamma node just takes the image input like this. So you could just select this, select this, select that, and then hit F. That connects it automatically. And now, if we were to look at this in the image viewer, and we change this value to something like two or something, now we can darken this down. And then you, you, you could do this with anything, whether this was a human saturation, a gamma node, uh, any other node really, where you uh, adjust your, your pixels. And you can use this for, let's say you're using this mix node, you wanna, use, now you're using the crypto mats for just objects, but you can use this with ambient occlusion, or maybe it's your depth of field, you wanna tweak that in, you wanna make some adjustments, anything can really be targeted with crypto mats. So, and we can take it a step further and we can start chaining this together as well. So right now, this is our, this is our new original uh, render layer, basically. So now we wanna do everything from here. So let's take our crypto mat node, just collapse that. And let's say now we wanna target the, the things that are parented, for example. So now that we have our assets, just connect our assets to the cryptos. Go, connect these two, hit F, so the image is connected. And just remember to clear any values that are left over from before. And if we now look through this, this is how this input looks like. So let's see, these, these might look the same, like these are all white values, but the levels and accurate mode just make sure that all this is separated. You don't need to worry about this. This is just leave these by default. That'll work for basically any use case, I think. Um, but then if we pick, let's say we pick the parent object here, parent or child, now these are gonna be in our map. So now we can target these ones specifically. So let's connect that again. And then we want another mix node, just duplicate this. And then we wanna take our mat again into our fact value. Now this is gonna be our new original render pass. So you wanna take this image input into the top image input. And then we need another way to control our pixels. So we just add a, add a hue and saturation to this one, for example. There, then we can select the previous mix, shift select this, shift select that, hit F, and now these are all connected up. So just to explain, it just connects the image values of this, because now there's a leftover image value basically, and Blender is smart enough to figure out which one to select. Let's view that. And now we can change the hue of this. Let's say we want a blue ball or something, more saturation, uh, increase the value, want to make it a little lighter. And then you can always go back and forth and you can keep extending this as much as you want. Let's say you just want to specifically to pick this object in the back or this kind of material, you can then go in and target that specifically. So crypto mats are, they're a super powerful way to edit your scene, mask out anything that you really want. You don't have to worry about assigning different mats and mat materials to your objects. I also really recommend that you render out all three of like all three options you have objects materials assets you you might think that maybe just uh, the, the materials is good enough but now you can for instance uh, set all chrome materials to be darker but this specific chrome material is extra dark so the more control you have here the easier it is and it just means you won't have to re-render as often Yes, I mean, I could go through and show more, but I hope you get the point of this. Uh, you could do the same thing again with materials. Like if you wanted to target the materials of the trees, for example, that's just selecting these values, connecting the crypto mats to here for the trees. And then you just rinse and repeat with your mix node, with your color corrections or whatever it is, connect it, and then you have full control over it. Now, this is where it was really cool for me when I was using this to paint this picture, where I was just painting it and on the fly, I would just jump back into Blender I would realize, oh shoot, I need a mat for just this one here. So I don't paint over it when I'm doing the rocks or something. And I didn't have to worry about it. Just render it out, put it into Photoshop, and it just works. So if you want to see more compositing tricks or compositing workflows uh, in Blender, 
Make sure to let us know in the comments, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you get notified every time we put out new videos. And if you're interested in professional training or 3D assets, 2D assets, 2D training, whatever it is, trying to advance your career within the CG visual effects or animation industry, make sure to pop over to the Flip Normals Marketplace and grab something from there.